For the first time in seven years, the New York Knicks have a record above 500. For the first time in a long time, Knicks basketball is actually worth watching again, and that is because of multiple factors. In the offseason, the Knicks didn't make any huge splashes, but they made two that have helped them significantly, getting Tom Thibodeau and Austin Rivers. Let's start with Austin Rivers. He revived his career in Houston where he was playing in a primarily isolation heavy offensive system. On the Rockets, his primary role was to create and he has done just that with the Knicks as well. Another issue with the Knicks last year was their lack of spacing and Rivers has also given them a huge lift in that area. He has started off the season shooting 55% on threes on a team that has guards that primarily slash to the basket. Nothing illustrates this more than when he scored 14 straight points against the Utah Jazz to end the game in the fourth quarter. With the game down to the wire, Rivers was able to create 14 points for himself with a flurry of moves and solid ball handling which helped to get separation, but his defense is what I really wanted to highlight. Rivers is a very underrated defender and I want to show some possessions to illustrate how he has elevated the Knicks defense. Trey Young dribbles the ball down and tries to drive baseline, but Rivers cuts him off. Then he tries using the Capella screen to try to draw a cheap foul, but Rivers anticipates this and strips the ball out of his hands. The Hawks then try to get Rivers off of Young by setting a double pin down, but Rivers is able to fight over both screens. John Collins sets another one, but Rivers with some help from Kevin Knox is able to recover and this play ends with a DeAndre Hunter jumper. I might make a video about this in the future, but when we think of defense, we are always talking about steals and blocks, but being able to fight over screens that prevent teammates from helping off of their other assignments is such a crucial part to team defense because it makes opponents often stagnant and forces a lot of isolation ball. Speaking of defense, Tom Thibodeau has elevated the Knicks defense to an above average defense and it starts with good rotations. Sabonis, who has been on fire to start the year, has a face up against Nerlens Noel and once he puts the ball on the floor, notice that three Knicks players are ready to help and this pressure forces Sabonis to lose the ball and turn it over. Malcolm Brogdon runs the pick and roll with Sabonis here, and even though RJ Barrett's assignment is Aaron Holiday, he makes sure Sabonis does not get the ball. Once Brogdon passes it to Holiday, Barrett then closes out, and even though this is an open shot, Holiday only shoots a 3 at 26% to start the season, so this is good scouting by the Knicks. This next possession is just beautiful defense. Brogdon runs a quick dribble handoff with Sabonis, which is supposed to flow into another dribble handoff, but Rivers denies the pass to Oladipo. Brogdon runs the pick and roll with Sabonis, which gets Quickly's attention in case Sabonis was going to roll. Now Quickly gets beat, but RJ Barrett helps on the drive and Quickly goes to cover Barrett's initial assignment. Sabonis then drives past Noel, which Barrett then comes to help, and once McDermott goes up, Noel is there to challenge the shot and the Knicks get the stop. Excellent rotations and great cohesion, Thibodeau has gotten the Knicks to play on defense. Although the Knicks don't have enough players to space the floor, they have been really controlling the paint and that's because of Mitchell Robinson on both ends of the floor. When the Knicks put up a missed shot, he is always around the rim ready to tip something in or at least get the offensive rebound. He currently averages 3.4 offensive rebounds a game which is good for 5th in the NBA right now. Against the Pacers, I counted 5 times where Robinson tipped in a missed shot which gave the Knicks a huge boost. When he's not tipping in baskets, he's running pick and rolls with Payton and Barrett. Because Payton and Barrett's strengths are driving to the basket, defenses have to first make sure that they both don't get a free run to the basket which tends to get the big man out of position and so to demonstrate this on this play Barrett runs a quick roll with Robinson and Miles Turner is caught out of position which leads to the lob from Mitchell Robinson but again Robinson's biggest impact has come on the defensive end and I will again show some clips of how he has controlled the defense Trey Young tries to run a pick and roll with Capella and Barrett contains it well which forces him to pass it to Cam Reddish who then tries running another pick and roll on the shot attempt, Robinson's length and athleticism allows him to affect this shot. And on this one, Clint Capella tries calling his own number and spins his way into the paint. Because of Robinson's tendency to jump, Capella stays down and waits for Robinson to land, but he keeps his arms up to affect the shot and Capella isn't really a good offensive player anyway, so he misses the shot pretty badly. And out of a timeout, the Jazz try to run a play for a Donovan Mitchell lob. As Mitchell gets the backdoor cut screen from Rudy Gobert, Robinson notices it and uses his length and athleticism again to deflect Ingles' pass which leads to a turnover. And of course, I haven't mentioned Julius Randle yet, but he has been playing out of his mind especially as a playmaker. He was seen as a consolation prize when the Knicks couldn't get Kyrie Irving or Durant in the 2019 offseason, and last year he was seen as a ball hog and had to apologize to the team for his lack of leadership. But Randle has been an instrumental part of the Knicks offense so far. He is averaging 7.5 assists a game and a big reason for this is because he is able to put the ball on the floor and make plays for himself or others. In every game I've watched, Randall has been able to get mismatches a lot which leads to him getting doubled and the ball starts moving which tends to lead to an open shot. 
He still has ways to improve as currently he is averaging 5 turnovers a game and still can't shoot threes at a high clip on a team that already has spacing issues, but the fact that the Knicks can be a great defensive team with their best player committing 5 turnovers a game is pretty impressive. Randall continuing this production is something we're going to have to see for the future, but for now the Knicks have used Randall and a strong defense to become relevant in the NBA again. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, if you did please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time, peace.